how's it going there? I'm about to try something new, and it's going to be floating, otherwise known as going into a sensory deprivation tank. It's something I have not done before. I'm looking forward to it. I'm doing it in my journey to develop the ability to de get into some deep, mindful meditation. All right, time to experience my first 90-minute float. it guys it has come down to me learning to be able to get into some deep mindful meditation and from there it's all a matter of using willpower to overcome my adversities all right time to get floating well 100 minutes later and whew, let me tell you guys that is one hell of an experience and it's definitely something I'm going to be doing a lot more of because I feel it's got some potential to help me achieve goals in life and once I get home I'll describe a little bit more about my experience during my first float. I mean yes it was fun but it was definitely insightful but I definitely got a lot of work to do to really achieve that deep meditative state but I figure the next few times I do this and find myself in such a pot, I'm just going to let my mind wander, just kind of let it do its own thing, and then I start practicing and getting into that deep meditative state, and that way I can really focus and just work and imagine myself achieving my goals so that I can become reality. Well, I'm back home now, so I'm going to kind of fill you guys in a little bit on my first experience doing a float. And let me tell you, it's definitely quite the experience, but like anything else in life, it's definitely going to take me a few more floats to kind of get the gist of achieving this, uh, what they term, uh, hypnagogic state, where it's just like, a trend, like you're in this like transition between wakefulness and sleep. And that's where I'm hoping I can develop this uh, ability to really get into some deep meditation, uh, doing some visualization, among other things. But that's gonna be for a future video and why I'm really uh, pursuing this uh, floating or going inside these uh, sensory deprivation tanks. I'm gonna leave that for a future blog and it might be pretty in-depth, but let's get back to my first experience being inside that uh, uh, floating pod. Uh, obviously, uh, the first thing I wanted to make sure I do uh, did was uh, when you get inside, of course, you know, you're gonna create, you know, the waves in the water and it's not that big as you guys noticed, but big enough to where you can kind of like Kind of just like that your hands, you know, float free like that. But you you do have a tendency to kind of, uh, you know, move around a little bit because of the, of the waves you create. And so you're going to, you can kind of bounce off the walls and that kind of will take away from the experience. So what I found, what I did was as soon as I got in, I would turn off the light. So it's completely, it's completely dark. You, there is no light. You've got earplugs in to help muffle any sound if there's any at all and by the time you get under under the water there's essentially no sound so you've got no sight <laughs> no hearing and so I'm putting my my arms up like that to kind of like stabilize myself and as soon as I feel the water really calm I slowly let my arms just kind of like drift up like that and that's when I started getting the sensation of just kind of like it's like I felt like I was like I guess it would be like drifting off in space. It's like my body just felt like it was going like in all different kind of different directions. Kind of just like being in like a space capsule. It was definitely kind of a, an interesting sensation. 
And then, of course, because I have no sensory input, you know, no sensory stimulus, you know, I start seeing, you know, some of like these slight colorations through my eyes. Nothing like, it's, I'm sure it's not like uh, doing like ayahuasca, doing like any like hallucinogenic, but I, you do start seeing a little bit of color just because you've got no stimulus coming in. And then I kind of like, it's really hard to tell because I don't know if I really fell asleep at all or if I was just kind of like in this hypnagogic state where I was kind of like right on this border of like wakefulness and sleep. And I was in there for 90 minutes, uh, a little over actually, and it did not feel like that at all. But being that it's dark, you really have no sense of like touch because the water and air temperature matches the temperature of your body. So it's really trying to, it's basically like you've got no sight, no hearing, and really no sense of touch. The only thing you can really hear is your own breathing. So I guess your your sense of hearing is not completely eliminated because you can obviously hear your own breathing and even like sometimes your own heartbeat. But aside from that, it's just kind of like a real peaceful feeling. Just like, it's really cool. It's like, you know, you, you know you're floating out water even though you really don't feel it because it gets to a point where your your body just acclimates to that temperature i think it's kept at like 93 degrees and the air temperature is exactly the same temperature as the water and so you just kind of like have this sensation just kind of just like floating in space and so what happened with me is it's really hard to tell if i actually fell asleep or if i was in that uh, transitional state but you know uh, as soon as I heard the music come on, which is your signal that your time is up, and that stays on for about five or ten minutes before like the water starts uh, uh, swishing around. I guess it goes through like that's how like it goes through filters to like clean it out and like I guess do like their sanitation sanitation process and all that. So they give you enough time to kind of just come back to this like fully wake state, so you're not just having to like okay, it's like you're in this deep like relaxation state and then you have to all of a sudden get up now they allow you enough time to just kind of like gradually come up but it's it's a lot different than when you're taking like a midday nap and then sometimes it's like you just have trouble you know getting back up and you just want to fall back asleep and you feel like your midday nap really didn't do you any good that's not the case with what i experienced it was like a complete feeling of like being refreshed and it's like you could say it's like now that's what you could call a true power nap but as i say it's really difficult to tell if i actually did completely fall asleep and my mind through the whole process especially at the beginning was just kind of like kind of all over the place you know it's going to take me a few more floats to kind of get the the technique down to kind of like learn and just kind of like clear everything from my mind so that way i can get into focus and what i'm trying to really focus on in life but my mind was kind of like drifting all over the place, not really thinking about anything in particular, but then it just got to the point where I really wasn't thinking about anything. I wasn't thinking about like my stresses with depression or social anxiety or the fact that I've got several uh, class projects that I'm just falling behind on because of my depression and anxiety. All of that, I completely just somehow forgot about. And I was able to kind of like focus on other things like, okay, I, what I'm, you know, this is going to be like uh, one of my last weekends at Stevens Pass this year because they're closing in a couple of weeks. And it's like, I want to be able to hit all three of the big jumps in the terrain park. I have still yet to accomplish that. So I'm kind of like trying to imagine myself hitting these jumps or like maybe imagine myself skiing down this downhill race course. Just kind of like trying to get some visualization practice. And I definitely need to, need to do a lot more of that. Just kind of like getting the practice of visualizing myself maybe doing a certain trick or racing down a you know racing down a certain race course or just kind of like visualizing myself like becoming a better person or at least be, being able to better cope with my depression and anxiety but that's pretty much um, the, i mean the general uh, summary of my first experience floating is definitely at the very least it's very relaxing it's calm it allows you to kind of, hopefully it will allow you to just completely forget about your stresses and kind of like refresh, your, you know, just kind of refresh yourself. And, you know, it's been about an hour, hour and 10 minutes now since I floated. And it's like the relaxation actually really starts kicking in now. And so I'm kind of really relaxed. And I think, 
you know, I'm probably going to sleep pretty good tonight, hopefully. I mean, it's been a while since I've had a really good night's sleep, but my, I just feel like really relaxed, and I almost really feel like I'm ready to just like take on the mountain. Like, I just feel like I could just like take the biggest air and just like be able to, you know, stick it, you know, have the strength to just stick that landing or just ski fast, make some fast turns. It's, it's, it's like I'm just really completely relaxed, and I think I have found something that may have some great potential because as I say in my future blogging video I'm going to talk about how you know I will go back into therapy but I'm not going to use it to really achieve uh, certain goals like you know increasing my social skills I'm not going to use it for that means because as I, I'm going to mention in my future video I think therapy really falls short on that especially for those individuals who don't really have much of, of a support system nearby them to really kind of apply the skills they learn in a therapist office out in the field. But more on that in my blogging video, which I'm gonna really talk about and why I'm really pursuing uh, floating to help me learn to get uh, into this deep meditative state because I feel with what I've seen on the internet and even what I've seen on videos, I think there's a big potential with meditation. And even if I can, even if I cannot ever completely overcome this depression or anxiety, or even if I, even if I can only get minimal improvement, minimal improvement is better than none at all. That's what I hope to achieve. So uh, I thought I'd kind of just kind of do this video. It's been a while since I made a video, but I thought I'd do something that's a little different, kind of share an experience that I did for the first time. And I'm definitely going to be doing more of it. But in the meantime, yep, I'm just going to try to enjoy this moment because, you know, maybe by tomorrow morning, you know, I'm kind of going to be back in my, you know, downer mood you know kind of like the loneliness depression and the anxiety but for now i just kind of kind of kind of just like enjoy the moment while it lasts because you know, it may not last you know through the night it may not last through tomorrow so i gotta enjoy it enjoy it while i can so that's my experience of floating if by chance you guys have access to a place where they have float tanks or uh, sensory deprivation tanks i encourage you to try it out it's definitely an experience worth having and it could potentially have many uh, benefits in, a, in helping to improve your life so once again uh, thanks for uh, watching and hearing me tell uh, tell you guys about another uh, first-time experience of mine Godspeed